Well, good afternoon. And on behalf of the first family, welcome to the White House. It's going to be my great honor today, and in fact, a privilege to administer the oath of office to the 42nd United States Ambassador to Japan, Bill Haggerty. joined today by some very distinguished guests, Senator Alexander and Senator Corker, both from Bill Haggerty's home state of Tennessee. Would you join me in welcoming both of them? <laughs> I see distinguished members of the military and other honored guests. I know the family is very grateful you're here, uh, as is the President uh, and myself. We're joined today also by the most distinguished guests who are here, and that is our incoming ambassador's wonderful family, his mother, Ruth. <laughs> and most especially, his wonderful wife, Chrissy, and their four beautiful children. Would you guys stand up? Go ahead and stand up now. The Haggerty family heads to Japan, <laughs> and it's a big crew. We also have many other honored guests with us today, including the commander of the United States Armed Forces Japan, General Jerry Martinez, and many distinguished members of Congress from his home state, as well as the senators that I mentioned before. In fact, it's important to note that Senator Corker is, in fact, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Affairs Committee, and we're truly honored to have you and Senator Alexander here. We're also joined by members of Congress from the House of Representatives in Tennessee, Congressman John Duncan, Congresswoman Diane Black, Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, Congressman Scott Jajarlis, David Kustoff, and Congressman Phil Rowe. Would you give them all a round of applause for their comments? And I know it's a particular honor to have with us Bill's counterpart, Japan's ambassador to the United States of America, Ambassador Kenichiro Sase and his wife, Mrs. Nobuku Sase. <laughs> as well as a special advisor to the Prime Minister and member of the Diet, Katsuyuki Kawai. As I had the privilege of expressing during my trip to Japan on the President's behalf earlier this year, under President Donald Trump, the United States is firmly committed, firmly committed to our treasured friend and ally, Japan. One of the clearest signs of that commitment, I believe, today is the President's choice of Bill Haggerty as America's ambassador to Japan. Bill, throughout your life, you've helped to strengthen the ties between America and Japan. It started early in your career when you actually lived in Japan on a three-year assignment as a consultant. You then served as an economic advisor under President George Herbert Walker Bush, and in your time as commissioner of the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development, you worked with Japanese firms to make investments in your home state that have created good-paying jobs for the people of Tennessee. But your commitment to Japan reaches far beyond a professional level. Your service on the board of the Far East Council of the Boy Scouts of America has brought the people of our nations closer together and our, has deepened the friendship of our nations for generations to come. President Trump has now called on you to represent the United States as our ambassador to Japan. And this is a momentous time in the life of our alliance. In this time of challenge and widening threats in the region, the U.S.-Japan alliance remains the cornerstone of peace, prosperity, and freedom in the Asia-Pacific. 
the United States and Japan stand together resolutely to confront whatever threats are posed to us, especially those posed by the regime in North Korea. And we always will. And the President is also committed to expanding our bonds of commerce. As President Trump said when he met with Prime Minister Abe earlier this year, in his words, the vibrant exchange between us is truly a blessing. And so it is. And through the U.S.-Japan Economic Dialogue, which the President had me launch during my visit in April, our nations have been working tirelessly to deepen our bilateral economic ties even further. And we look forward to working with you to advance that effort. Bill, given your integrity, your record of leadership, and your distinguished history, the President and I are confident that you will excel in this new role. You will help make the extraordinary friendship and alliance between the United States of America and Japan even stronger. And now it is my great privilege to administer to you the oath of office. I, Francis Haggerty IV. I, William Francis Haggerty IV. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you the United States Ambassador to Japan, William Francis Haggerty IV. Mr. Vice President, thank you so much. It is truly an honor to be sworn in by you, sir, uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, you were our incredible leader as chairman of the transition team, and it was my privilege to serve under you there. Thank you very much, sir. Second, <laughs> second, on behalf of the United States, you lead our economic bi bilateral dialogue with Japan. There could not be a more fitting person to introduce this relationship than you. Again, thank you. And third, uh, it's, it's a very personal point to me, but the last time that I was in this room was when I was on the staff of another great vice president who hailed from Indiana, Vice President Dan Quayle. It was an honor to work for him then, and sir, it is an honor to work for you now. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to thank our senators, Senator Alexander, Senator Corker. Both of you have been mentors, friends, and guides to me. It's meant so much to me personally to have the benefit of your incredible knowledge, your leadership, and I look forward to continuing to work very closely with you both as we move forward. I know that I would not be here today were it not for you. Thank you. The rest of our Tennessee congressional delegation, I've worked with all of you from, from the tip of Memphis to the, to the top part of Bristol, Tennessee. So glad to have you, uh, your support and have you here. I want to thank some great ambassadors 
that are here with us today. I'd like to start with my great colleague, Ambassador Sasai from Japan. I look forward to working with you, sir. It will be a great honor. You're one of the most, you're one of the foremost ambassadors, not only from your country, of course, but in the entire ambassadorial arena. I look forward to working and learning from you as time goes on. Also, there are five ambassadors here today that I'd like to acknowledge and recognize. Uh, one of them has been a great friend and mentor to me for a number of years, Ambassador Bob Kimmett. Thank you very much for being here, sir. Um, <laughs> Ambassador Tom Shannon is here. Uh, Tom, I'm so thankful that you're here, sir, and I appreciate your leadership. As our Under Secretary of State, uh, you play a very important role, and I feel very honored to serve with you. Um, Ambassador Stuart Holliday from the United Nations is here. Also, Ambassador Martin Silverstein is here. Thank you, Martin, for being here. And a new ambassador, <laughs> our soon-to-be ambassador, George Glass from Portugal, is with us here today. George, I could not be more excited about your presence and the opportunities for our country with Portugal, so thank you for, for being here as well. I'd also like to ask those of you who can, who are, on the, who are on the transition team, to please stand. Those of you who are already standing, please raise your hand. There's a wonderful brotherhood and a bond here that we all formed. And I can tell you that I wouldn't be here were it not for all of you. But that partnership, that time in the trenches, has meant so much to me. And to have you here today it really touches my heart. So thank you so much. I'm also very pleased to be here in the presence of my friend Ray Washburn, who will soon be the head of OPIC. Ray, I look forward to working with you very soon. And I also would like to thank my friends who have traveled from far and near. Uh, you've come from overseas, uh, from all across the country. I can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, it's a true honor. And so with that, I'd like to say I look forward to the challenge ahead of us. I couldn't be more honored nor more humble, given the leaders that have gone before me. But please know that I'm going to approach this with the vigor and energy that you all know that I have. And with the support of my wonderful family, we're going to make a wonderful contribution to what is already a wonderful relationship, even stronger. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony on behalf of the Ambassador, the Vice President, and the Ambassador's family. Thank you so much for being here and sharing this very special occasion. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much.